Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. So we've got the Hyundai on the hoist and what I'm going for here is the timing chain, see if I can fix up that timing chain, if it's just a tensioner that's gone and also trying to assess uh, if it's not, where do we go from there. Keep in mind that this, this is a new motor that's put in and it never sounded good. So let's get into it. All right, let's take this timing chain cover off. Comes the oil. Just put that under there to catch that oil. All right, there's our timing chain. That's tight. Looks tight. <coughs> Got a bit of uh, silicon on there. So my thought is that there's a pin that um, they release, which then pushes this up. But from what I've seen from another video, this has to be pushed up even further to lock into position. So that has spring in it. Should it have spring in it? I don't know. Alright, turn it on for one second, then turn it straight off. Yep, start it and turn it straight off. Okay, one more time. Okay, alright, we're getting oil. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so, uh, stripped it all down, and from what I can see, the timing chain tensioner is doing exactly what it needs to do. Uh, time chain's doing exactly what it needs to do. One thing I did notice was the squirt of the oil did take a little, a little bit, you know, maybe five seconds until it started squirting properly. So there was always going to be, um, there was always going to be more than one possible cause to this problem. So the first way, first one I looked at was the timing chain because I looked in another video and it looked like it just wasn't clicked into place. This one's spring loaded, doesn't click into place. So I had a good look at it. There is flow of oil through it. So although the sound does sound like it is coming from here, um, I'm still leaning towards the other option, which was my first choice, but I should have gone with that, which was oil pump. Oil pump is possibly not putting out enough pressure, not lubricating quick enough. Although the sound is coming from up top, if it's not getting enough oil, that could definitely be the problem. Uh, the other the other option too is it could be in the head. I'm leading away from that because that's going to be a massive, massive job. And then we'll have to, you know, tear all this down again. So uh, for now, I'm going to go stick away from the head and I'm going to go for oil. I'm going to go for the pump, which is located down here. I'm going to ch check the relief valve on that. And hopefully that will come up as uh, short or too compressed or not right. And if that's not right, fix that and then hopefully we'll be uh, pumping oil and everything will be good. It's pumping oil now, it's just not pumping it quick enough from what I, what I can see. Okay, so the front end is now back on, everything apart from the bumper bar and the intercooler, as you can see down there. I've dropped the, dropped the sump. Here is my oil pump and oil pickup. Oil pickup is clean, there's a mesh in there. You can see that's nice and clean. 
oil pressure relief valve and oil pump. So first things first, check the valve, check it's up to spec and size. And if it is, then we might have to go for a new pump. To drop this pump, that's going to be a pain in the ass. I have to remove this plate all the way up and around here to bolt this on and then bolt it back up. Hopefully it's just this. So let's find out. Okay, so I've got a few photos. That's the pressure relief valve and that's it with the spring. So when I was pointing to with that black dot, that's the screw nut, then the spring, then the relief valve. Now if that gets locked open or locked closed, as you see, there's holes in it, oil won't flow, so you get too much pressure or not enough pressure. Here's the diagram from the guy who built the motor. He's showing me where it lives and that it's accessible by dropping the sump, which I did, and I stretched it out or basically checked it, made sure it was exactly 71, 72 mil. It's got 72 there. Mine was 71 or one and a half or something. So it was close enough within range. So I dropped the sump, checked it, put it back in, and uh, that's the overview of it. See that whole aluminium piece? That's the basically what the pump is. It goes on the bottom of the block in between the sump and the block. And that's that's the whole part there. Now, after speaking to him, we went over the screws and the nuts and bolts and things. Uh, he was telling me that it can be, you know, removed from underneath. You know, just by dropping the sump, it should be able to get it out with those bolts indicated in blue. I must say, for tech support, he was super helpful. Um, it was super disappointing that I had to tackle this problem outside of warranty, but every mechanic I went to and all the rest didn't want to touch it. And it was only after it was out of warranty, it was on my shoulders that I started to have to tackle it and found out what I did. And just for reference, the photos and all the rest it was giving me was for the wrong model. My pump couldn't come out that way. I needed to drop that whole aluminium tray to get it out. So although he's sending me photos, they're for the wrong model. So it led me down the path of thinking it could be done when it actually couldn't. And here's another bit of advice. If you're going to be dropping it um, the pump and you've got the same motor as I do where you don't have those bolts on the front to remove the pump from the front after you drop the, drop the sump just pull the whole motor out and flip it over it is would be easier to do it that way anyway leave your comments down below um, so do you think uh, by checking it and putting it back together or so far of what we've done worked or not leave your comments down below and thanks for watching